Welcome back. It could be less than a week before the scenes we saw playing out in Canada happen in America. Truckers in the United States are now planning a cross-country protest of vaccine mandates. On Wednesday, they're kicking off what they call the People's Convoy, which is going to travel from California to Washington, D.C. And already, security in D.C. is getting ready. Capitol Police will reinstall fencing around the Capitol amid growing questions over whether we'll see that kind of tactics that Canada took to shut down the truckers, shut down their protests, take place here in the United States. Among other heavy-handed tactics, Canadian authorities took over the bank accounts of citizens linked to the trucking protests, including some people who were not even taking part in the entirely peaceful protests. More than 200 personal and business bank accounts have been frozen. $3 million sent through a payment processor has been halted. 253 Bitcoin addresses shared and nearly 100 vehicles towed in Ottawa. And GoFundMe has also freezed $10 million in donations to the truckers, including a number of donations from here in the United States. A Canadian parliament member tweeted that a single mom making minimum wage had her account frozen for donating $50 to the truckers when it was 100% legal. She had not even participated in these protests in any other way but donating money to people who were peaceful, peacefully protesting. She and other donors are left without due process to appeal these decisions. And today, a Canadian trucker says his truck was seized and its location is now unknown. His personal and business bank accounts have also been frozen and he's unable to work. Ottawa's mayor says they're looking into selling the trucks they confiscated to recoup the cost to taxpayers of an entirely peaceful protest. We bring in Bacha Unger Sargon, Deputy Opinion Editor for Newsweek. Uh, Bacha, you think we're wrong to compare the United States and Canada in this? Yeah, I think so. You know, their, their equivalent of the ACLU stood up for the truckers and has been opposing um, the Emergencies Act and opposing Justin Trudeau's government very vocally. I don't think our ACLU would stand up for people in that situation, but independent media, conservative media and Republicans definitely would. And so I've been watching this and thinking, I actually don't think this could happen in America, not because of the ACLU, but because of people like you, Leland, who have been covering this. Unlike in Canada, where so much of the media is really very much aligned with Trudeau's government. Yeah, you think about some of the things that Justin Trudeau has said. Um, Trudeau on donations. Take a listen. We see that roughly half of the funding that is flowing to the barricaders here is coming from the United States. The goal of all measures, including financial measures in the Emergencies Act, is to deal with the current threat only. Financial deplatforming, is that the new censorship weapon that can be used by governments? Yeah, absolutely. Look at whose money they're taking. You know, this single mother who sent 50 bucks over, you know, to support these freezing protesters. What is she supposed to do when she can't access her bank account? You know, like there's a lot of people who cannot afford to be debanked like this. I was talking to one of the leaders of the protest and he said to me, you know, his entire bank account has been frozen. Credit lines, everything has been totally frozen. He said people are telling him he should take, you know, political asylum in the United States. I mean, where does he go from here, right? What is he supposed to do? How are you supposed to feed yourself? I completely believe that this is the next, you know, the next frontier of political censorship. And what they're doing is they're silencing the working class. They're silencing people like this single mother, like people who sent 40 bucks here, 20 bucks there just to support this protest. You know, you want to know who is in charge of this, who is doing it. You know, look at who is in power. That's who is most threatened by this, you know, workers of the world uniting. Yeah, you know, if you have billions of dollars, you're a philanthropist. If you have 50 bucks and you give it to people who are protesting vaccine mandates, somehow you're a criminal. Um, this caught our eye. Vladimir Putin, Russia freezes bank accounts linked to opposition politician Navalny. Uh, and this was tweeted out as if it was some terrible tactic that the Russians were engaged in. Then from BBC, Trudeau vows to freeze anti-mandate protesters' bank accounts. Why is the media treating the strongman of Russia in such a different way than the free leader of Canada. 
Because, you know, our media is on the side of war, right? And our media is on the side of the elites. Our media is on the side of the people in power. They're on the side of the progressives and they're against the working class. And so anything that is seen as targeting the working class, they're going to be cheering on, even though it is the exact same thing that's being done by Putin. But because they've decided that Putin and Trump are on the side of, you know, the evil and the wrong, you know, they're going to call out and, de and, and denounce the very things that they're cheering on in their own backyard. Yeah. Well, I'm going to disagree with your premise a little bit that uh, if it happened in Canada, I feel like there's every reason to be scared. It could be happening uh, in America soon. Bacha, you've been outspoken on this from the very beginning and talking about it long before the rest of the media was, which uh, says a lot. Thanks for being with us, as always. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for covering this, yeah, Leland. No, it's, it's important for you to be willing to say the things you do. We'll talk soon. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.